Of course, uh, we could also put everything together. So we can put the AR models with the MA models. We'll put the I in the middle for integrated and have everything all together. So we've got a constant. We've got terms that depend on the previous step in the data. We've got terms that depend on the previous error. Uh, we've got some error overall, uh, and we're just gonna put it all in one big model. So let's go back to our clothing expenditures. Now uh, we've got an AR1, we've got an MA1, and we can put those in the same model. And now we get uh, coefficients for the AR1, the MA1, and the constant. Um, and we can see if these things are significant. It looks like uh, it's not significant. The MA1 is actually not significant in this model. So we might not want to include that one. Uh, you might have noticed that in the order parameter here, I have three things that I can give. There's the AR, there's the MA, and then there's something that we've been leaving as zero. And so that last parameter is differences. So we can bring differences into the model. If you were going to write out the notation, you would put in some delta Ds. And generally, we either do D equals zero, which is what we've been doing before, or D equal one. We don't do more differences than that. So let's, um, let's do that for the clothing expenditures. Um, since we're going to include differences with that D term, I'm going to go back to original sales. So instead of doing the differences, I'm going to use the sales in billions. Um, and I think this model, this has some AR1. It has some differences. One, uh, and it has MA. It doesn't have any MA. I don't know if MA0 is really the way to note it, but... Um, it doesn't have any moving average. And, and then we get some slightly different output, uh, which you can see here. We get the AR1 and we get a term called drift. So it looks like they're both significant, so that's good. So I'm pretty sure that the, um, the parameters are listed as order equal to C, P, D, Q, and P is for the AR, uh, D is for the differences, and we'll move this up, and Q is for the MA. Uh, and so here's um, some residual uh, ACF plots. Uh, this is for my most recent model. We'd like to make sure that the residuals look random. I've got a few that are, are popping over the boundary there. So there's maybe some seasonality that's still in there uh, that we'd like to model. So there's this idea of seasonal arima, which is just gonna go completely nuts with terms. So this is gonna have lowercase pdq, which will be the regular autoregressive terms, regular differences, regular moving average terms, and then capital pdq for the seasonal uh, autoregressive terms, seasonal differences, and seasonal moving averages. We're just going to let R handle it. I'm not going to ask you to write out a model that has all these pieces. It's just too much. So let's do seasonal arima again on the sales in billions. In this case, I specify the order. Uh, and again, this is the lowercase p, d, q. And then I'm also going to give the seasonal. Um, and it's a little bit more complex. But uh, again, this is going to be p, d, q. Uh, so this is AR2 in the seasonal uh, consideration. And so you can see then I get some SAR, uh, seasonal autoregressive model, and then just regular autoregressive uh, terms. And it looks like uh, my autoregressive term is significant. One of my seasonal terms is significant, uh, but this, this last one is not. Uh, and again, we'd want to look at residuals. I've still got a couple that are that are poking out, um, so maybe I could do a slightly better job modeling. But uh, you know, you also get some that are um, significant just by chance. So now we've been doing all this modeling stuff. Uh, so if you think about our choose, fit, assess, use framework, we've been choosing 
um, ARIMA models of various kinds. We've been fitting them in R. Uh, we've been assessing them using p-values and I guess ACF plots. And then the question is, how are we going to use this model? So one is uh, just kind of to look at the coefficients, but I don't have a good intuition for what those coefficients really mean. And so the way that we really want to use the model is to make predictions. So there's this apocryphal quote by Yogi Berra um, that it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. And I think if you're kind of a lay person, maybe that um, quote is a little bit funnier than it is for a statistician. For statisticians, we're often making predictions that aren't about the future. We're doing testing and training data sets, or we're trying to do predictions on data we already have to see how good our model is, things like that. Uh, but with time series, we really want to make predictions into the future because we've been modeling something with respect to time, and then time moves on. So in R, if you save an ARIMA model uh, and you give it a name, so in this case I called this ARIMA 111 because I had order 1, 1 here and 1 here, I don't know. Um, so I saved that model. And then I could use the forecast function on that ARIMA model, and then I tell it how many time points I want it to make predictions for. So in this case I said go out another 10 years. And so it will do a point forecast. So I would forecast, you know, the, the year after this data ends that you would sell $366 billion, 372 the year after that, 379, et cetera. So you get point forecasts, um, but then you also get prediction intervals. So remember we talked about confidence intervals and prediction intervals uh, earlier in the class. The prediction intervals are always wide. These are going to be wide intervals. And so um, R gives you an 80% interval, uh, the low and high, and it also gives you a 95% interval, the low and the high. So you, you never want to just look at the point forecast. You want to look at one of these intervals. Um, and you can also save those forecasts as an object and you can plot that object in R. And R has a plot method, which will automatically make a plot of the data. So it'll be all the real data from your model. And then it will plot the point estimate as the middle line here. And then it'll do, this is the 80% interval and there's the 95% interval. So you can see, you know, we're pretty sure that the, the sales are going to go up. We don't really see sales getting much lower than they were at year, you know, 82 or wherever we were. Maybe they could go a little bit under. Mostly we think that they're going to go up, but we have this pretty wide uh, interval. So that was a lot of slides. I think this kind of mixed some of the code in because I tried to show it where it was relevant, but I do have a lab that goes into more detail with the code.